Today we're going to talk about something that is crucial for achieving success in any aspect of life, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. In today's message, I want to share with you five ways that you can break out of your comfort zone and reach new levels of success. Now, I know it's not easy. We all have our own comfort zones that we tend to stay in because, well, it's comfortable. But the truth is, growth and success can only be achieved when we step out of that zone and challenge ourselves. And let me tell you, you are not alone in this struggle. We all face moments where we feel stuck, where we feel like we're not making progress or reaching our full potential. But the good news is that by listening to this message, you can turn things around. You have the power to push yourself out of your comfort zone and create the life you truly desire. So get ready to take some notes because these five tips are going to help you break through your limitations and find the success you deserve. Let's get started. Starting with number five. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I have seen firsthand the power of setting goals and holding oneself accountable. I have witnessed the transformation that takes place when a person decides to take control of their life and push past their limitations. You see, we all have a comfort zone. It's that place where we feel safe and secure, where we know what to expect and we can go about our daily routines without any major challenges. And there's nothing wrong with having a comfort zone. It's natural. But here's the thing. Success does not reside in our comfort zone. Success lies just beyond it, in the realm of uncertainty and risk. So how do we break out of our comfort zone and find success? The answer is simple. We must set goals and hold ourselves accountable. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I have set goals before and I never seem to achieve them. And to that I say setting goals is just the first step. Holding yourself accountable is what will make all the difference. Let me ask you this. Have you ever played a game without keeping score? How would you know if you won or lost? The same goes for life. If we don't set goals and hold ourselves accountable, how will we know if we are making progress or not? How will we know if we are winning or losing? Setting goals gives us direction. It gives us something to strive for. It's like having a map. It shows us where we want to go and how to get there. Without a map, we may end up wandering aimlessly, never reaching our destination. And holding ourselves accountable is like having a GPS. It keeps us on track and helps us make adjustments when we veer off course. Now, I want to share with you three key steps to setting goals and holding yourself accountable. Step one. Define your goals. This may seem obvious, but many people fail to set clear, specific goals. They may have a general idea of what they want, but they haven't taken the time to define it in detail. So the first step is to get clear on what you want to achieve. Write it down, make it specific and measurable. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, define what success means to you. Is it a certain amount of income? Is it a specific job title? Is it a certain level of happiness and fulfillment? The more specific you are, the easier it will be to hold yourself accountable. Step two, create an action plan. Once you have defined your goals, it's time to create a plan of action. This is where you break down your goal into smaller, achievable steps. Think of it as a roadmap with each step getting you closer to your destination. This will not only help you stay on track, but it will also give you a sense of progress and accomplishment as you check off each step. Step three, hold yourself accountable. This is the most crucial step. Without accountability, our goals are just wishful thinking. We must hold ourselves accountable for taking action towards our goals. This can be done in various ways, such as setting deadlines, tracking our progress, or finding an accountability partner. The key is to have someone or something that will hold us to our commitments and keep us focused on our goals. Now, I want to address a common misconception about accountability. 
Many people see it as a form of punishment or a way to beat themselves up when they don't achieve their goals. But I want to challenge that belief. Accountability is not about punishment. It's about taking responsibility for our actions and choices. It's about being honest with ourselves and recognizing where we may have fallen short. And most importantly, it's about learning from our mistakes and making adjustments to do better next time. I also want to emphasize that accountability is not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. We must hold ourselves accountable every day, every week, every month, and every year. It's a continuous cycle of setting goals, taking action, and holding ourselves accountable. Now, I want to share with you a personal story about the power of setting goals and holding oneself accountable. When I was just starting out in my career, I set a goal to become a millionaire by the age of 30. I had no idea how I was going to achieve it, but I was determined to make it happen. And I held myself accountable by tracking my progress and making adjustments when necessary. And you know what? I achieved that goal at the age of 31. Now, I'm not saying this to brag, but to show you the power of setting goals and holding oneself accountable. Now to number four. The fourth way to break out of your comfort zone and find success is by continuously learning and growing. You see, life is a journey of constant growth and development. And if we want to achieve success, we must be willing to learn and grow every single day. As the famous saying goes, if you're not growing, you're dying. And I couldn't agree more. Now let me ask you this. How many of you have set goals for yourselves? Goals to achieve success in your personal or professional life? I'm sure most of you have. But let me tell you, setting goals is not enough. We must have a burning desire to continuously learn and grow in order to achieve those goals. Because success is not a one-time event, it is a journey. So how do we continuously learn and grow? Well, the first step is to have a curious mind. We must be curious about the world around us, about new ideas, and about different perspectives. As children, we are naturally curious. We ask questions, we explore, we learn. But as we grow older, we tend to lose that curiosity. We get comfortable with what we know, and we stop seeking new knowledge. But if we want to achieve success, we must reignite that curiosity within us. The second step is to be open to new experiences. We must be willing to step out of our comfort zones and try new things. As the saying goes, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. If we want to grow, we must be willing to take risks and try new things. It may be scary at first, but trust me, the rewards are worth it. The third step is to read, read, and read. Reading is one of the most powerful ways to continuously learn and grow. It exposes us to new ideas, different perspectives, and endless knowledge. And the best part is, it doesn't have to be limited to books. We can read articles, blogs, listen to podcasts, and even watch educational videos. The key is to never stop learning. The fourth step is to surround ourselves with people who inspire us. We are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So if we want to continuously learn and grow, we must surround ourselves with people who are also on the same journey, people who challenge us, motivate us, and push us to be better. As the saying goes, if you want to soar with the eagles, you can't be hanging out with the turkeys. The fifth step is to be willing to make mistakes. We must understand that making mistakes is a part of the learning process. It is through our mistakes that we learn and grow. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Embrace them and learn from them. The sixth step is to have a growth mindset. We must believe that we can learn and grow, that our abilities are not fixed. As Carol Dweck, the author of Mindset, The New Psychology of Success said, the view you adopt for yourself profoundly affects the way you lead your life. So let's adopt a growth mindset and believe that we can continuously learn and grow. The seventh step 
is to reflect on our experiences. It is important to take the time to reflect on our experiences, both successes and failures. What did we learn? What could we have done differently? Reflection allows us to gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and our journey. As Socrates famously said, the unexamined life is not worth living. The eighth step is to have a mentor. A mentor is someone who has been on the journey that we want to embark on. They have the knowledge and experience that we can learn from. Having a mentor can greatly accelerate our learning and growth. As the saying goes, a mentor is someone who sees more talent and ability within you than you see in yourself and helps bring it out of you. The ninth step is to attend seminars and workshops. Seminars and workshops are a great way to learn from experts and like-minded individuals. They provide us with a concentrated learning experience and the opportunity to network with others. So, make it a point to attend seminars and workshops in your field of interest. And finally, the tenth step is to take action. All the knowledge in the world is useless if we don't apply it. So take action on what you have learned. As the saying goes, knowledge is not power, applied knowledge is power. So don't just be a consumer of knowledge, be a doer. Now, I know that learning and growing can be challenging. It requires effort, dedication, and consistency. But trust me, the rewards are worth it. As we continuously learn and grow, we become better versions of ourselves. We become more knowledgeable, more skilled, and more confident. And most importantly, we become closer to achieving our goals and finding success. Moving on to number three, I have spent my life studying and teaching the principles of success. And let me tell you, if there is one thing I have learned, it is this. Success is not a solo journey. It takes a team, it takes connections, it takes networking. Now I know what some of you may be thinking, networking. Isn't that just a fancy word for schmoozing and making small talk? Well, let me assure you, it is so much more than that. Networking is about building relationships, creating opportunities, and expanding your horizons. It is about stepping out of your comfort zone and connecting with others who can help you grow and achieve your goals. So let me share with you the number three way to break out of your comfort zone and find success. Network and connect with others. First and foremost, networking allows you to expand your knowledge and perspective. When you surround yourself with like-minded individuals, you are exposed to new ideas, different ways of thinking, and diverse experiences. This can open your mind to new possibilities and help you see things from a different angle. As the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Networking allows you to go far by learning from others and broadening your understanding of the world. Secondly, networking can lead to new opportunities and collaborations. When you connect with others, you never know what doors may open for you. It could be a new job offer, a business partnership, or even a mentor who can guide you on your journey. The key is to be open and receptive to these opportunities. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and make connections. As I always say, success is not to be pursued. It is to be attracted by the person you become. By networking and connecting with others, you become the type of person who attracts success. Next, networking can provide support and accountability. When you have a network of people who believe in you and your goals, it can be a powerful source of motivation and encouragement. They can cheer you on when you succeed and pick you up when you stumble. Additionally, by sharing your goals and progress with others, you create a sense of accountability. This can push you to work harder and stay committed to your goals, even when things get tough. But networking is not just about what you can gain from others. It is also about what you can give. By connecting with others, you have the opportunity to help and support them as well. As the saying goes, the more you give, the more you receive. By being a valuable resource and a supportive member of your network, you will attract the same in return. And let me tell you, there is no greater feeling 
than helping someone else achieve their goals and watching them succeed. Now, I know that for some of you, the idea of networking may be intimidating. You may be thinking, I'm not good at small talk or I don't know anyone in my field. But let me tell you, networking is not about being the life of the party or having a long list of impressive contacts. It is about being genuine, making meaningful connections and adding value to others. So how can you start networking and connecting with others? Here are a few tips to get you started. One, attend events and conferences related to your field or interests. These are great places to meet like-minded individuals and expand your network. Two, reach out to people you admire or want to learn from. Don't be afraid to send a message or email expressing your interest in their work and asking for advice. You never know, they may be willing to grab coffee with you or even become a mentor. Three, join online communities and groups. With the rise of social media, it has never been easier to connect with people all over the world who share your interests and goals. Joining online groups can provide a great platform for networking and learning from others. Four, be a good listener. Networking is not just about talking and promoting yourself. It is about listening to others, showing genuine interest in their stories, and building a connection. Five, follow up and stay in touch. After making a connection, be sure to follow up and stay in touch. This could be through emails, social media, or even meeting up for coffee. Building and maintaining relationships is key to successful networking. Networking and connecting with others is a crucial step in breaking out of your comfort zone and finding success. It allows you to expand your knowledge and perspective opens doors to new opportunities, provides support and accountability, and allows you to give back and help others. Now to number two. The number two way to break out of your comfort zone and find success, embracing failure. Now I know what you may be thinking. Failure? How can that possibly lead to success? But let me tell you, my friends, failure is not something to be feared but rather, it is something to be embraced. In fact, I believe that failure is an essential ingredient in the recipe for success. You see, in order to achieve greatness, we must be willing to take risks and step out of our comfort zones. And when we do that, failure is inevitable. But it is how we respond to failure that truly determines our success. Let me share with you a personal story. When I was just 25 years old, I was a broke, struggling entrepreneur. I had tried and failed in multiple business ventures and was on the brink of giving up. But then I attended a seminar by the great Earl Showoff, who became my mentor and changed my life forever. He taught me a valuable lesson that failure is not something to be ashamed of, but rather it is a learning opportunity. He said, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for fewer problems, wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenge, wish for more wisdom. These words stuck with me, and I realized that I had been looking at failure all wrong. Instead of seeing it as a setback, I started seeing it as a stepping stone towards success. And that mindset shift made all the difference in my life. You see, failure is not the opposite of success it is a part of the journey towards success. It is through our failures that we learn and grow, both personally and professionally. And it is through failure that we gain the experience and wisdom to overcome any obstacle that comes our way. But unfortunately, our society has conditioned us to fear failure. We are taught to avoid it at all costs and to see it as a sign of weakness. But let me tell you, my friends, Failure is not a weakness, it is a strength. It takes courage to try something new and risk failure. And it takes even more courage to get back up and try again after we have failed. In fact, some of the most successful people in history have experienced failure multiple times before achieving their dreams. Take Thomas Edison, for example. He failed over 1,000 times before finally inventing the light bulb. When asked about his failures, he famously said, 
I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So, my friends, I urge you to embrace failure. Embrace it as a necessary step towards success. Embrace it as a learning opportunity. And most importantly, embrace it as a chance to grow and become better. But how do we embrace failure? How do we turn it into a positive experience? Well, the first step is to change our mindset. Instead of seeing failure as a negative, see it as a positive. See it as a chance to learn and improve. The next step is to take responsibility for our failures. It's easy to blame external factors for our failures, but the truth is we are in control of our own success. When we take responsibility for our failures, we also take control of our own success. And finally, we must use failure as a stepping stone towards success. Analyze your failures, learn from them, and use that knowledge to try again. Remember, it's not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get back up. Now, I know that embracing failure is not an easy task. It takes courage, determination, and a strong mindset. But I promise you, my friends, the rewards are worth it. When we embrace failure, we open ourselves up to endless possibilities and opportunities for growth. Now, I would like to share with you the number one way to break out of your comfort zone and find success, and that, my friend, is taking risks. We all have dreams and aspirations, but often we let fear hold us back from pursuing them. We get comfortable in our daily routines, in our jobs, in our relationships, and we become complacent. We settle for mediocrity because it feels safe and familiar. But let me tell you, staying in your comfort zone will never lead to success. Success requires us to step out of our comfort zone and take risks. It requires us to be bold, to be brave, and to be willing to fail. Yes, you heard me right. Failure is a necessary part of success. Without failure, we cannot learn and grow. Without taking risks, we cannot reach our full potential. Think about it. All the great achievers and leaders in history were risk takers. They were not afraid to go against the norm, to challenge the status quo, and to take a chance on their dreams. They were not afraid of failure because they understood that failure is simply a stepping stone to success. But why is it so hard for us to take risks? Why do we let fear hold us back? The truth is, fear is a natural human emotion. It is our body's way of protecting us from potential danger. But the problem is, our minds often confuse perceived danger with actual danger. We let our fears paralyze us, and we miss out on opportunities for growth and success. So how do we break out of our comfort zone and overcome our fears? The first step is to identify what is holding us back. Is it fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown? Once we understand our fears, we can start to work on overcoming them. One of the best ways to overcome fear is to change our mindset. Instead of seeing risks as something to be feared, we need to see them as opportunities for growth and learning. We need to shift our perspective and understand that failure is not the end, but a necessary part of the journey towards success. Another way to break out of our comfort zone is to start small. We don't need to take huge, life-altering risks right away. We can start by taking small risks in our daily lives, trying a new hobby, speaking up in a meeting, or even trying a new food. By doing this, we build our confidence and prepare ourselves for bigger risks. But let me be clear. Taking risks does not mean being reckless or impulsive. It means being calculated and strategic. We need to weigh the potential risks and rewards and make informed decisions. We also need to have a plan in place and be prepared for any outcome. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I fail? What if I take a risk and it doesn't work out? My answer to that is simple. So what? Failure is not the end. It is an opportunity to learn, to grow, and to come back stronger. Failure only becomes permanent when we give up and stop trying. I want to share a personal story with you. 
When I was starting my career as a motivational speaker, I took a risk and invested all my savings into a seminar. I had no idea if it would be successful, but I took the risk anyway. And you know what? It was a complete failure. I lost all my money, and I felt like a complete failure. But instead of giving up, I learned from my mistakes and kept going. And that seminar was the catalyst for my success. So I can confidently say that failure was the best thing that ever happened to me. So my friends, I urge you to take risks. Embrace the unknown, challenge yourself, and step out of your comfort zone. The rewards will far outweigh any temporary setbacks. Remember, success is not a destination, it is a journey. And taking risks is a necessary part of that journey. Thank you.